and uh, true story. Uh, while they were making it, while they were raising the funds for it, while they were putting it together, they put him in this one uh, holding unit that was three foot by three foot. He uh, basically at least the part that he could walk in. So he was going back, you know, and forth about three feet each way, you know, type of a deal or three or four feet, and that was uh, about what he would do, and 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 that was it. When they opened up the beautiful new exhibit and they allowed him to go on out, and uh, three foot doesn't sound enough, let's say six or seven feet. Then when he went out into uh, 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 the huge exhibit and everybody's applauding and, and, you know, it's beautiful, it's new, and what does he do? You know, he goes back just a few feet this way and a few feet this way and back and forth. Why? Because he had gotten used to that. He had, he had whittled in his mind uh, his capabilities down to simply uh, being able to do what he had been used to. And I think a lot of times as believers, we in our faith are simply limiting God because we haven't known this God that is the miracle working God that's bigger than anything we can imagine. And so we need to, again, expand our horizons in faith to see what God can do. God's supernatural intervention in human affairs uh, is, is exactly what a miracle is. If we define it, it is God's intervention in uh, supernatural intervention in human uh, affairs. Uh, Lisa and I were saying, you know, I said, what's the greatest miracle that you've ever seen, Lisa? Uh, and, and she, I knew what she was going to say. And it was the same thing I was going to say. And the greatest miracle uh, that we have ever seen has been the birth of our, of our children. And so sometimes I think what we define as a miracle, there are miracles that are taking place that, that we just think that somehow that's, a, that's just a, a phenomenon of nature. And I don't know how many of you have, have uh, had children or been there when a child is being born. Uh, I know that Beyonce, you ready for a Beyonce uh, illustration here? <laughs> I need to make sure you're listening. Um, hello, hello. No, okay. But anyway, so, so Beyonce, my girls, you know, my girls are watching the Beyonce uh, special. And Beyonce uh, was saying that she was there when her sister had a baby. And, and she said, at that moment, my sister and I are just like, God, you are so real. I mean, I remember that feeling with, I mean, this, you can't explain this outside of a supernatural God. And once you've seen a baby be born, you'll never question miracles again. Um, David is the great giant slayer. And when we think of him, you know, we think of him as the great giant slayer. We think of Moses as the great deliverer of God's people. But the reality is, is that there are so many miracles that have happened, that happened in David's life that we could easily pass by in Scripture. I wish I, you know, it could go for hours on that topic and that idea, it, true to Moses' life as well. I mean, wh- how can you explain a man who doesn't even know David? Uh, David's never even met him. A man that is a prophet that comes to David's home when David doesn't even know he's there. And all that David's doing is the faithful thing he's always done of taking care of the sheep. But there's a man in there ready to tell him his destiny. David already senses something. There's something about him being so excellent in the fields that God saw the excellence of his heart. And he brought him in to be king when his brothers and his father never saw that in. There's something about a miracle happening there when the oil won't flow for any brother that stands before him. Until David comes in, that oil will not flow. The oil will only flow when David comes on the scene. Then the prophet, who wasn't certain who he had come to anoint, knows this is the one. There's a miracle in that. We can say, well, the miracles when Goliath. Well, well, hold on a second. The miracles in the concept that that day started out with bread and cheese. The miracle is in the concept that that day that he was guided to where his brothers were and to where Goliath is in the first place. God is in our guidance, in our lives. That is a miracle. That is supernatural intervention. Yet we keep moving to, yeah, but Goliath, Goliath, Goliath. Yes, Goliath there. And what a phenomenon that was. But it's more than just a giant dropping that day. It's the fact that even with his brothers there, he is not intimidated. Even with all that he's hearing and all the mockery, he's not even listening. He just moves towards that enemy, and he knows he's going to bring him down. The miracles in the fact that he's picking up stones to face a giant. The miracles in the fact that he's slinging a stone in the air. All of that is a miracle. We could go on and on and on. You have miracles that are all around you. 
and you are waiting for the big phenomenon giant to drop. I want you to know that God will take care of that. You embrace the miracles of the now that he's bringing towards you. And as you do so, you're going to see that God is the one that creates the miracles, not you. And you don't have to beg him for your miracle. God will bring your miracle. You just simply need to honor the God that you serve and be faithful to him. Walk in him. Do your due diligence to walk faithfully in the Lord. Miracles, uh, miracles reveal God's nature. Miracles reveal God's nature. They reveal that God is bigger than some things. And I wrote these things down, and it's not an exhaustive list. It was just me having fun. So here we go. God is bigger than sickness. God is bigger than sickness. Can I hear an amen? amen. We see this in the story of the healing of the leper, the healing of a lunatic in scriptures, the healing of the lame, the healing of the blind, the healing of those that are, are sick, and, and how it is that they're so sick, and yet Jesus comes on the scene, or he speaks a word, and they're raised up even though they were dying. We see that God is bigger than death. See that with the story of Lazarus. We see that with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. God is bigger than death itself. Now, that's huge, because if anybody were to say what the greatest enemy is, they'd probably say death. And God is bigger than death. In fact, we could go through the whole story of Moses and how Moses dies, and and everybody must have thought, that's unfair, that's not right, Moses has died, he was our great deliverer, he didn't get to see the promised land. But then you realize God's bigger than death. He brought Moses back in the New Testament. He's standing there with Jesus, twiddling his toes in the soil of the Holy Land. He made it. He made it. And everybody else at that hour thought, God, you're not bigger than his death. He didn't get to go in. Yes, he did. You just let me get to the New Testament. I'll write it. Don't worry about it. And he took care of it. God's bigger than nature. Jesus calmed the sea. The wind and the rain were subject to him. He walked on water. Then we see that God is bigger than the forces of evil. Some of you need to know this right now. Jesus cast out demons. Jesus could take authority over every evil spirit and all that the evil spirit would try to do. And then God is bigger than our circumstances. And, and uh, you know, here's 5,000 people. How are you going to feed them? God's bigger than that. Disciples, listen to this. You know, you got God in your midst right here. Don't ask all your quest stupid questions anymore. I mean, it's all right. Jesus is patient. But he's going to take care of this. He's going to feed them, and there's going to be plenty left over. And we could go through so many stories of how God's bigger than the circumstances that we face that we think are insurmountable and impossible. And then we see in Matthew 4, 1 through 11, what miracles are not, and I'll uh, save on time not to go through that right now, but it's the whole idea of the uh, Satan trying to tempt Jesus in the wilderness as, he's launched, as Jesus is being launched out into three years of ministry. And so one of the things that happens is that uh, Satan takes Jesus to where he's at the uh, top of the, uh, the pinnacle of the temple, and he says, you know, cast yourself down, throw yourself down, and an angel will catch you, and the angels will not let your, you know, your foot hit the ground type of a deal. 